Well, thank you so much for staying with us. Our first half of the show, we were talking about lawns and how to control weeds and grubs and all of those kind of things. And the second half of the show, we are going to be talking about our gardens and seed starting. So we're going to start off with seed starting. And because this is, again, the time of year that we want to do some seed starting. And um, so many of you um, like to start your seeds at home. Some of you, of course, you want to come to our garden center and buy your organic plants that are ready to go in the ground, the tomato, the peppers, the cucumbers, the squashes, all ready to just go right into the ground as a seedling. But for those of you that like to start your own seed, I'm going to give you a couple tips. First off, it's too late for peppers. So if you want to have a nice harvest of peppers in September, you're a little late to get those peppers started from seed. Now, if you want a mild pepper, like a a bell pepper, um, and you don't care about getting your harvest until the very end of September, the 1st of October, then you could go ahead and start some of those mild peppers, but it's definitely too late for your hot peppers. It's also too late for some of your herbs um, that germinate a little bit more slowly also. You're going to want to wait and buy those as a plant. And most of your flowers, um, it's getting a little late. Um, If you want to have a flower on your plant, you know, in the first of June so that you have flower for the whole summer. Um, You could still start some marigolds probably and be okay because they germinate quite quickly. But for those seeds, you're going to want to wait. But you still have plenty of time to start tomato seeds if you're going to be able to start them this coming week. Also, plenty of time to start like your cucumbers, your squashes. There's plenty of time to do those kind of things. Um, And some of those could even be done as a direct sow. A lot of people will start their cucumber seeds, you know, directly into the ground. Again, you're not going to have a harvest as early as if you do start indoors. Um, Starting indoors gives you a nice um, jump. Remember, there are some key things to remember when you are starting seeds. Using a seed starter mix is going to be best because there is less perlite in those blends and your seed has a closer contact to the actual um, peat medium that it can root into more quickly. The perlite will hold it away and it has a harder time um, germinating um, and starting to root into that where their perlite is because it's they're so small. Also in a small container is best. So if you sprinkled your tomato seeds in a great big pot, um, they're going to germinate much more slowly than they are if you use a tiny little cell pack. Um, we even use a plug tray and a plug tray is the size of a flat um, but there are 288 little cells in that plug tray. So we start our seeds in there. They germinate much more quickly and we um, make sure that we have heat. Heat to the root system, um, so keeping that soil warm, is a key factor in getting your seeds to germinate quickly. They do not need light. The seed is under the soil or under the vermiculite. They do not need any light at all to germinate. All they need is heat. So that's the key component is heat there. Um, If you don't have an area in your home that's really warm, um, they're still going to germinate. They're just going to germinate more slowly. But like right now, if you are germinating pepper seeds and you really want to give them a kick to get them to germinate more quickly, um, get a heating pad. Um, your old heating pad that you might have, turn it on the lowest setting, put a cookie sheet on top of your heating pad and put your cell packs um, on top of that um, cookie sheet and have that on the very lowest setting. Make sure that the soil is moist. Um, You will notice that you can have germination usually within four to six days. Um, You will have germination on most of your things that you're you will be germinating at this time. And that's really going to help speed things up so that you can move them into a bigger pot um, so that they have some nice size when it is time in May to put them out for you. But remember, um, 
you don't need the heat or you don't need the light until after germination. You only need the heat. But as soon as you have germination, as soon as you have a green little stem, a green leaf popping through that soil, that's when you want to get it into the light and some cooler temperatures because that's going to help it harden off and you won't have that damping off that you will have if you keep it in the heat and in little light, it will be stretching for the light and it makes the stem um, very, very weak. And a lot of times then it will fall over on you and packing soil up around it just makes it worse. So you don't want to do that. Packing that soil up the stem will give you stem rot even more quickly. So it's ideal to have the heat while the seed is germinating. As soon as it germinate, take it away from the heat and just so the air is warm then and is in a very well lit spot. And that's going to really help with your germination and the growing of your plants. So hopefully that works out very well. Also right now we need to be prepping our garden so that when our seedlings that we're starting are ready to go into the garden, our garden is ready. So this is the time that we should be adding in our compost, some old manure, um, even our pre-emergent weed control. This is a great time to help ourselves not have so many weeds is by putting a pre-emergent weed control in our gardens now. It's going to stop those weed seeds from germinating. And um, then when it's time to plant, we won't have to worry so much about the weeds. So go out and um, if you had a cover crop on your garden, go ahead and get ready to till it in. And then sprinkle your cow manure, your horse manure, your chicken manure, whatever you're using. Remember, this stage of the game, you want to use old manure, not new manure, because new manure will still be too hot and you will burn your plants. So you want to make sure that you're using old manure. I like at least a year old. Um, some people like even older than that, and some people will go as new as six months old. But I would never go with any manure that is younger than six months old on a garden that you're going to be planting this season. Anything newer than that, you want to be letting it sit in the garden um, for a year before you would be planting it. So get those things on your garden, till them all in, and then sprinkle your corn gluten meal all over top of it. You will be surprised at how many fewer weeds you will have. And also in manure, especially horse manure, a lot of times um, because of the quality of hay that they're um, fed, there'll be a lot of seed that will pass through to their manure. And that weed seed will germinate in your gardens then. So putting the corn gluten meal down on top of that will stop that weed seed from germinating and save you a lot of weeding as the season comes on. So it's going to be a good idea to do that. And then you're going to have all of that working into your soil, decomposing, fertilizing, enriching your soil with lots of good organic matter. And it will be ready when it's time to go ahead and put your cold crops in, um, which will be soon. And then late into May, when you're putting all of your other things in, when the threat of frost is over. So remember, there are things that you can plant early, even the second, third week of April. If you do a lot of cold crops, you can go ahead because some of those things can stand a frost. Um, a lot of your kale. Now, this you really don't want to start seed outside for kale and Swiss chard and um, spinach and lettuce because those cold soil temperatures are going to encourage germination of those seeds. But if you have the seeds started indoors, those plants will transplant outside just fine. And then that root system can go ahead and get started growing. And the, the leaf tissue can handle the cold temperatures without any problem at all. So you'll be fine to go ahead and, and get those cold crops in. And a lot of you have some hotbeds or some high tunnels or low tunnels, and it is perfectly fine to go ahead and get those things planted right now if you haven't already. Um, several people have been planting in their high tunnels for a couple weeks now, and um, they get a head start on the game. So it's a, it's a great thing to do if you can, um, is to have um, some way that you can have an area covered in your garden so that you can go ahead and get some cold crops in really early and then you can start enjoying the fruits of your labor uh, much earlier in the season than you would at other times. 
So if you have questions that you would like us to answer on the air, um, you can always um, give us a call at the store at 330-455-5997. We will answer your question on the phone for you because most of the time you don't want to wait till the radio show. Or if you have a topic that you would like us to cover, um, on the radio show. We ask you to get let us know about that. So you can do that by calling us at 330-455-5997 or you can email me at cindypetiti at gmail.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-P-E-T-I-T-T-I at gmail.com. And we will make sure that we get that information on the air for you. We will email you back if it was a question that you had. But if you do have a topic that you would like us to cover or if you have a non Nonprofit group that you would have an event coming up that you would like us to pass that along to our listeners, we would love to um, do that for you. Um, we would also love for all of you to stop out at the store and visit us. Actually, today we are having a farmer's market. We have Canton's Indoor Farmer's Markets um, from November through April. Um, it's Stark County's only true indoor farmer's market throughout the winter. And uh, we have two more today. And on the 20th, we will be having another market. Um, and they run from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. So you have plenty of time to um, get over to the store and um, and pick up some great things um, at the farmer's market. And so many people ask, what do you have for a farmer's market um, in, in the winter time? And There isn't, you know, tomatoes and peppers, of course, because everything is locally grown or locally made um, at our farmer's market. But we have um, lettuce blends, um, um, salad blends that we sell. We sell um, Swiss chard and bundles of kale. Um, Sometimes we have some spinach. Um, So we have all of these things um, at the store. And then we, the other um, vendors at the farmer's market will have wonderful um, organic baked goods, some not organic baked goods that are wonderful also. Um, But we have uh, vendors that sell oils and crafts and jewelry and different things like that. So we welcome you to come over um, to the market. Um, Like I said, there's only two left today in the 20th, but uh, to experience experience that. And, um, and then uh, other markets will be starting up in May. Plain Townships Farmers Market starts up the first part of May. I think it's the first Wednesday of May they start. So it's going to be, which is the first of May this year. So it's a great market too. And um, we invite you to attend all farmers markets because that is where you're supporting your local farmer. Remember, know your food, know your farmer. Well, I want to thank all of you for listening and being back with us for another year of radio shows um, on Saturday morning. I know it's early at 8 a.m. to get up and listen to the radio, but we really appreciate it. And hopefully you get some wonderful gardening tips. Thank you so much and have a blessed week.